Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in his inaugural address biden set the tone for all that would follow a rise of political extremism white supremacy domestic terrorism that we must confront and we will defeat yeah, very optimistic and his attorney general and the FBI became maniacally focused on advancing that narrative with increasingly ominous warnings. Racially motivated violent extremists as a group are, are the most dangerous uh, of the domestic violent extremist groups. And within that, the white supremacists are the most dangerous and most least lethal. Specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. But when a trans day of vengeance gained steam days after Audrey Hale, a transgender, massacred six at a Christian school, Garland didn't see the need to issue any warning about growing anti-Christian hate across the country. Would he have been so reluctant if, let's say, I don't know, some conservative group had planned a Patriot Stand Ready rally? And that was scheduled to happen just days after some right-winger shot up a school. Uh, of course not. And we certainly all know that CNN would have put a microphone in the face of every congressman on Capitol Hill asking questions like, do you think the so-called Patriots event should go forward as parents are grieving? But here, reporters tried to turn the table on Republicans, confronting one local congressman who posed with firearms for a family holiday card. Any regrets about that Facebook post and the photo um, from your Christmas card? Why, why would I regret a photograph with my family exercising my rights to bear arms? Now, thankfully, the Trans Day of Vengeance was canceled by the event organizers. But true to form, they didn't cancel it out of respect for those murdered, but rather because they say they were facing threats. Now, remember, the Democrats' narrative will always be that conservative Christians are the biggest threat facing America at any given time. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. No matter what unfolds, even a trans person murdering Christians at a Christian school, the left's focus will be how anti-trans hate will spread in the aftermath. And when Republican-led state legislatures advance bills to ban things like genital mutilation and hormone shots for children under 18, the left says it's just more evidence of that pernicious anti-trans hate. The Washington Post proves our point in this headline. Nashville's shooting exploited by right to escalate anti-trans rhetoric. Are you with me here, people? Now, the response from the White House was equally as shameful, yet entirely predictable. More and more of these hateful, hateful bills. People don't want their freedoms to be taken. They want us to fight for their freedoms. And so it is shameful, it is disturbing, and uh, our hearts go out to uh, the, those, the trans community as they are under attack right now. But this is a president who has said many times before he has their backs. They're under attack. And Joe Biden chimed in saying transgender Americans shape our nation's soul. But a wave of discriminatory state laws is targeting transgender youth, terrifying families, and hurting kids. Tone deaf? and false. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. 
To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Why are you nervous? But I meant like I've never met anyone that's not. So I can't really explain. Is this your first time seeing a drag queen? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, a fight it, but a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. I've never seen a drag queen before. <laughs> and what do you think? I think it's cool. It's great? Yeah. Why are you nervous? I don't know, it's just different, it's different and yeah. new, yeah. Do you think that boy can wear makeup? Yes. And would you agree that makeup is for everyone? Yeah. Yeah? Where do you buy your drag clothes? This is a, I bought this at Value Village, second hand. I make a lot of it and sometimes I'll buy things second hand and I'll alter them to make them more drag. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16.49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The president, his administration, and all the radical gender activists, they're all lying. They all know that this isn't about hating anyone. This is about protecting children from political, sexual, and medical exploitation. And for Biden, a practicing Catholic, to cheer this on is reprehensible. Equally so is his vilification of those who disagree with him, whipping the pro-trans fringe into an absolute frenzy. Now, just a few days ago, trans activists tried to storm the Kentucky State Capitol building after the legislature there voted to override a veto by their Democrat governor of a bill to ban sex surgeries and hormones for minors. Well, you can call it a transurrection, I guess. 
One protester you saw there even played the part of their equivalent of the QAnon shaman. And similar chaos yesterday in Tennessee, where hundreds protested at the Capitol there, calling for a gun ban and berating the Republican-led legislature. They even made their way onto the state Capitol floor. said about the parents who showed up at school board meetings. And look at what happened in these two states. Of course, no threat to democracy here. The media just framed it as another kind of run of the mill protest, even a family affair. Hundreds of people showed up today. I mean, probably about 1,500, maybe even upwards of that showing out. A lot of young people, a lot of young students skipping school, a lot of parents bringing their young kids here as well. Aw, how sweet, right? Uh, wrong. That argument about our tax dollars, let us go anywhere we want in the Capitol, that didn't work for the January 6th protesters. Well, you can see, though, how this could spiral quickly out of control. Democrats are ginning up a divisive, hateful dynamic in America. Now, folks have every right to protest. I'll always support that right. But this is something very different. The White House is lighting a powder keg here, playing a cynical game of division and distraction. We don't yet know what the Nashville killer's motive was, but Democrats' toxic, disparaging rhetoric against those who disagree with them must stop before another tragedy happens. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. I don't think I've seen anything more disturbing in my career, maybe, than the uh, Chinese expansion, uh, ongoing expansion of their nuclear force. That the expansion that they're undertaking puts us into a new world that we've never lived in before, where you have three powers, three great powers, essentially, with large arsenals of nuclear weapons. The U.S. Air Force uh, Secretary sounding the alarm over China's growing nuclear arsenal as the greatest threat we face today. Fox News senior strategic analyst, retired four-star General Jack Keane. Uh, General, you agree with that? Oh, yeah, very much so, Brian. Not only are the Chinese going to achieve at least parity with us in nuclear weapons, likely will go past us in the development of nuclear weapons. They already have more ballistic silos that they haven't put uh, nuclear weapons in yet, but they're already established out in western China. And here's the real issue. We've never faced this before. China and Russia have a strategic partnership, which they defined as limitless. So we'll be facing strategic adversaries who double the amount of nuclear weapons we have. And that is something we have never been in. We've had parity with the Russians for 45 years during the Cold War. We're not going to have parity with the combination of Russia and China together opposing the United States with a nuclear arsenal that's double the size of ours at a minimum. We also know yesterday the Russians made it clear they're not going to inform us of any uh, nuclear test. And we said, we're not going to tell you either. So now we essentially have no agreements. I believe. God has raised up Joe Biden for such a time as this. I believe God is using Joe Biden as judgment on the United States of America.
Since Biden took office, every kind of evil has run amok. God will use anyone he chooses to fulfill his purpose. And I believe that purpose for Joe Biden is the destruction of America. It's become clear to me that the world is on fire. And never before in modern American history have we needed a true leader more than we do right now. Why? Because our enemies are not only emboldened, they're bonded. Example, Iran reestablishing diplomatic relations with Saudi Arabia, looking to strengthen ties with the UAE, while suddenly becoming blood brothers with Russia and China, who spent last week having Iran proxy shelling our troops. Where is the American power? Where's the American pride? Those three countries together are going to be problematic for many years to come, I think, especially Russia and China because of their capability. Well, what are we doing about it? Which leads me to Russia, unlawfully blowing up our drones in international airspace. And we show them how strong we are by changing flight paths to stay out of their way. I repeatedly asked Secretary Austin if we had changed the airspace in which we were flying these drones over the Black Sea. He repeatedly dodged the question. I take that as an admission that we have altered it. Weak. And to show even how little regard the Kremlin has for our nation, Russia has done something they haven't done since the Cold War, back in the 80s. They arrested an American reporter from the Wall Street Journal on laughable espionage charges. Another enemy in Bolden, China. The truth about the Chinese balloon came out this week, and it wasn't a decision to let it fly across our country. It was actually worse. There was no decision for five days. The intel community made me aware on the 27th. Did you ever speak with Secretary Austin about this balloon? I spoke with Secretary Austin on the 1st of February. Really? Five days? If there's anything as vital as our physical security, it has to be energy. It's got to be trade. And that's why the pressure was on Biden's interior secretary, Deb Holland, especially now. And it could not have been clearer that she is not up for the job. She has never been qualified. Are you aware that China produces more emissions than any other, co any other country on the planet? I have probably read that somewhere. Have you read the Department of Interior report on critical minerals dated December 17? I have not read that full report. Thank you for that information. Are you aware by multiple studies that in order to satisfy the present requirements of EV and critical minerals of defense, it would take an increase of 2,000 percent of mining for 20 years? Are you aware of that? Thank you for the information, Congressman. In Washington, you could feel the tension boiling over. Let's look at our own borders, north and south, both wide open. Millions are flowing in and drugs are flooding in. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas can't even seem to answer a yes or no question. Do you know how many of the 600,000 gotaways were terrorists, yes or no? Senator, we are focused on this. What are these wristbands? I don't know what they are. You Senator. don't know what they are. Mr. Secretary, you've just testified to the American people you're incompetent at your job. The drug cartels, every color corresponds to how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. You've turned these cartels into multi-billion dollar criminal organizations. He's not exaggerating. And it's really not their fault. Because the incompetence of this administration comes from the top down. Seeing the gains China has made in Africa, we sent our vice president to make inroads, to push back. You could probably guess how that went. There are a number of things on the issue of the economy as a whole that we must do. A lot of that work is the work that I'm here to do on the continent. You feel better? When it comes to leadership at the top, another remarkable, unspeakable school shooting took place. The commander-in-chief, Joe Biden, makes yet another mistake by going with his instinct instead of staying with the script laid out right in front of him. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. And I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. <laughs> I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not. Does it seem like a good time to practice your stand-up comedy? The crazy thing is, there were no comments yet about the school shooting until the ice cream jokes, which were never funny. Looking at the overall coverage, you would never think that America was experiencing such a lack and lapse of leadership more crisis than you can record. It's become clear to me that the world is on fire. And never before in modern American history have we needed a true leader more than we do right now. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, 
Very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.